to order more pink. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And it looks like white too. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, I just gotta go to the grocery store. UV protection. Okay. It has a zipper on the outside. Okay. I didn't realize I was filming in my back pocket. This particular week was a busy week around here. I got a couple things in the mail that I purchased off of Amazon getting ready for Easter and collecting some umbrellas that would protect us while we were at soccer games as well as a new little crossbody purse and I spent two days this particular week helping keep my grandson because he was sick and needed to be out of daycare. Squirrel. If you saw a couple of my videos back, I did a painting with actual makeup brushes and that is what this particular brush is. I actually uh, have my thoughts and opinions about using a makeup brush. They do hold a little extra paint versus actual paint brushes, but I do um, like using the makeup brush. So that was what I was using here, but I also use regular paint brushes on this particular painting as well. Like I mentioned earlier, back in the beginning of the video, I did like the color combination of just having the pink, orange, and green. But I had already set out to use seven colors because I wanted to be able to use white and black in there. And I just needed to add um, a couple more colors that in my personal opinion this is too small of a painting to use that many colors although I did enjoy this process um, with you know trying to reach the final destination using this amount of colors are you and your family ready for Easter I guess mine is. The pair of shoes that I show in this video is for my daughter to use for Easter. I have not even found a dress or anything. I'll probably just wear something that I already have. 
used to, I thought that I had to have a new dress every year, but the older I've gotten, I don't necessarily always do that. The weather here has gotten awful nice. It's a good, you know, temperature outside. It's not quite too cold and it's not quite too hot. I know the hot is coming. So I spent a couple days whenever I was keeping my grandson, us outside enjoying the fresh air just as he got better. He loves to ride in his stroller. What is something that you do outside of your art? Art being with paint or art with makeup or art with writing, you know, whatever your form of art is, what is something else that you do? How do you carry out for your family? Do you cook at night? Once a week? Never. I would love to hear what you and your family do. If you are the cooker or if your spouse or partner is the cooker, or maybe your children. If you are not new here, you know that really and truly, I don't like to stop on a painting, even though I did say I liked those couple of few colors early on. I really do like getting in there and getting messy and just keep adding, adding, adding. And as this process goes on and I get this piece dry, I will use markers and pencil to add a little extra texture and color and just bring a few things out and about. But here you see me kind of adding on top of other colors. This is to add interest and just keep building, building, building. I've still been on the schedule where I'm filming and editing the same week. And I tell you, I really am ready to get back to the schedule that I had earlier this year where I was uh, filming, but editing that week, editing the video that I filmed the week before, because it seems like it is just a little more pressure trying to do both in one week of the same particular video. I feel a little more pressed with time, and I don't know who's to know, even if I went back, maybe my time this season of the year is just a little more intense with family obligations and other things going on in my life, so I don't know if I can get past Easter or whatever, I may revert back to that scheduling to see how it goes for me. If I do that, I'll keep you updated. It's awful wet right now, but I wanted to kind of show you up close. And so I'm going to get this hair dryer out so I can get it dry a little bit so I can see where we're going from here. I used to use the heating tool to dry um, early on in videos for this year, but I'll be honest with you, I don't particularly like it. The hair dryer is what I've always used, but my daughter had had it for a little bit, using it for a project that she was trying to finish up. But she recently cleaned that area and got it back to me, which I am happy to have it back. Here I am overlaying some colors as well as pulling underneath colors out to the forefront and also creating new shapes within certain colors. In the end, this painting reminds me of spring and what better time than this time of year to create a piece like this with these colors. If you noticed early on in this video, I gathered a couple pieces of paper, the book pages, a dictionary page, and just a piece of uh, paper. I believe it was oatmeal wrapper. Well, I like to have those out so whenever I have this extra paint, it's not going to waste and can put it on a piece of side paper because I will use that later in an artwork piece or in a journal.
it's always good to go ahead and just set those out before you start painting that way you have them on hand while the white paint was still a little wet i used that damp brush to kind of smear some of that white to tone some areas down and just kind of mix and allow things to flow together carrots celery and onion To finish out this day, I did add a light color of white on top of some areas just to kind of tone down some stuff and let some other areas, you know, pop or whatever. Well, I let this dry overnight and here in a few minutes you will see me come back and it will be the following day whenever I get out my pencils and markers. To me, it's always good to let something sit and dry before you finish because to me, whenever you come back the next day and you have fresh eyes, things look different to you. Playing with an old phone that belonged to my grandmother. I do not go in any particular order once I go in with a dry painting and start using my markings. I just typically start adding color, outlining shapes, coloring in, adding texture. Because on a painting particular like this, on this type of paper, whenever you press down, it gives like little indentions. This part here with the green pencil is probably one of my favorite parts of this particular painting. I went in with some just like crosshatch work and like I said it was uh, one of my favorite. Not only do I use a black colored pencil, but I also still use my black pen and my black Sharpie because each one just provides a different shade of black and a different type of marking. And that pen is a Sharpie, a permanent Sharpie, very fine point on it, and it is what I will actually use to sign this painting which, once it is dry. I really loved that the umbrellas had that sleeve that went on them and then you can actually carry them on your back because when you are heading in to a soccer game and you're having to carry a water bottle, a chair, a towel, you, I mean you name it, having that strap on that umbrella will be an easy route. I had recently picked up two other umbrellas that same exact size at my local grocery store, but once I got home with them, I realized they did not have any UV protection, and that really was one of my uh, top aims, being as I am a melanoma survivor, but also it helps keep the heat off of you more. I've had other umbrellas in the past that has no protection, and it just you still just get blazing hot out there so anyway I ended up taking those two umbrellas back to the local grocery store once I got home and realized and that's when I got on Amazon and ordered these two I'm really excited about them 
it seems that it is hard to find good umbrellas locally. That's why I kind of jumped on the ones at the grocery store. Well, I'm going to leave you here to finish out this video and continue watching this process. I'm so glad that you've been here and that you've watched this far, and I hope to see you back next week. Until then, bye-bye.